Well, hello there and welcome into another edition of the JMAC Snack. I have to apologize to those of you who are regular followers of this podcast. I have been very busy this week working on a lot of different projects. Some of those projects I'm going to reveal to you very soon, but it means I haven't been able to podcast as much as I want to this week anyway. So we've got a lot more coming up next week. I believe next week I'm going to start being able to do a live broadcast every single day. So I'm super excited about that. But I did want to uh, come to you and share with you what I've been able to find out about this ongoing Russian hacking story. Now, the thing that really shocks me is the word ongoing. That means it's still happening. And it means that they don't know how widespread it is. They don't know exactly what they've been able to access. And they don't know how to get rid of them. Now, if you haven't been following this story, to me, this should be screaming banner headlines for everybody. It was revealed that the Russians are in our government systems and in the systems of a bunch of businesses who use similar software. And again, we're just not sure where they're at and how to get rid of them. Here's uh, how it happened, basically. Jake, federal investigators are still scrambling to understand the scope of this attack, but officials I speak with tell me that it is significant and an alarming breach of agencies across the government. Now, this all started over the weekend when a private cybersecurity firm, FireEye, alerted U.S. intelligence officials that there had been a breach to the layers of defenses that protect these government softwares. And we have to note that a lot of these agencies actually rely on one particular company, SolarWinds, for their software. And so SolarWinds came out in the last few days and said that they believe that 18,000 government and private users downloaded a Russian tainted software uh, that essentially allowed these hackers to seep in and infiltrate these government softwares. And so you put up the list now, let's just look at it one more time. We've now confirmed that the Commerce Department, the Agriculture Department, and CISA, as it's known, the cybersecurity arm within the Department of Homeland Security have been attacked. And officials tell me that they are still investigating potential breaches at the Department of Defense, the Department of Treasury, and the U.S. Postal Service. So you can tell 18,000 employees downloaded this software and basically allowed the Russians to be in our system for the last eight months. And they're still there. That's what's so insane about this. And that this is a very sophisticated attack. Yeah, Brooke, I, I th- we often hear about sophisticated attacks. This was extraordinarily sophisticated. This was something that the U.S. government only heard of or found out about several days ago. But we now know uh, that, that it went into effect, that these intrusions started back in March. So since March, the Russians have been inside our systems. They continue to be inside U.S. government systems. Today, that cyber agency, which is known as CISA, warned that there are other ways that they got in that have not been revealed yet and that there are tactics that they're using uh, that we have not seen yet. So, so much remains to be seen. There's so much uh, forensic analysis that needs to be done to discover the extent uh, of this massive intrusion. So again, they're still doing discovery to try and figure it out. This is Sue Gordon. Uh, She was the former principal deputy director of national intelligence. This is a This is a big deal. This is bad for national security. It is bad for the cybersecurity um, discipline, the professionals, the craft. And and I'll tell you, it's bad for leadership because what it means is that we have not been focused on this at the highest levels in order to be able to think differently about how we protect ourselves against You know, we know the Russians are relentless pursuers. They they are not casual. They're quite sophisticated. Um, This is a big one. Yeah, this is a big one for sure. Now, just some things I've been able to find out in my research. No uh, confidential or top secret access as far as they can tell right now. But honestly, they're just scratching the surface about how big this is. So will it turn out that they did get top secret secret access or not. 
we don't know. And as I said, they are still in our systems. And I was watching one cyber expert who said that they could have very easily installed other back doors in the system. I mean, they've been in there for eight months, for goodness sakes. And those back doors would be very difficult to find. And it could be something that they could trigger down the road. So again, this is a major deal. Now, a lot of news networks have been talking about the difference between President Trump's response to the cyber attack and Joe Biden, president-elect, his response to the cyber attack. This is uh, Joe Biden's, or I got to get used to president-elect Biden. This is his response to the cyber attack. But just a short time ago, we did hear from President-elect Joe Biden in a very forceful statement. I'm going to read part of it. Uh, he says that, uh, among other things, they will be imposing substantial costs on those responsible for such malicious attacks. He goes on to say, as president, I will not stand idly by in the face of cyber assaults on our nation. So he sounds very serious. Uh, let me play for you President Trump's response. Oh, wait. He hasn't responded. Now, CNN made a pretty big deal of that today, and so did some of the other news networks. I, in a typical scenario, again, you know me, I'm not a knee-jerk reactor, and I have no problem if the leader of the free world takes time to get all the ducks in a row and does all the backdoor stuff, all of the behind-the-scenes stuff, before they come out and make a statement. The only problem with that is that this president has a very hard time calling out Russia for anything. So there is kind of a vacuum right now. And there are a lot of people in the Senate and in the House and in the country who are looking for our president to take a stand and to come out with some type of forceful statement. He has not. And again, we don't know what he's doing behind the scenes, so I'm not going to be as quick as they are to judge. What I do know is that this is a major deal. Some people are calling it an act of war. And again, we just don't know how crippling this hack could be. We don't know what type of information was stolen. And we don't know what the long-term ramifications are. And we don't know how to get them out of our system yet. Uh, that is frightening. So I'm going to continue to follow this story for you. I don't think that there's any individual concern for you or for your business at this moment in time, that is the good news. This is all about our federal government and companies who work with our federal government. So again, we'll continue to follow that. Hey, I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast that I've been working on several projects. One of those is a project that is based upon a request from many of you. Those of you who don't know, before the pandemic, one of the things that I would do is I would go around Utah and I would have a workshop called Joyful Union and it's a marriage workshop. And it's kind of funny because I'm not, you know, I'm not a, a trained therapist or anything like that, but I do have a unique perspective on a lot of things. That's one of the reasons why people like to listen to me because I can kind of cut through the nonsense. I can come up with common sense solutions and what happened was I would go on the radio and I would share some thoughts, some piece of wisdom, some advice for marriage when we would talk about the issue. And immediately people would text me and they're like, J-Mac, can you write that down for me? Can I get a manuscript of that? That was just amazing. So I started writing it down. And eventually I had written down enough that I put it in a book called Joyful Union. And then eventually people started asking me, will you come down to our to our church and and give this workshop? And will you come down and speak to our organization about this? It happened with Joyful Union, my book on marriage, and also Joyful Parenting, my book on, on parenting and raising kids in a digital age. Well, because we've been in the pandemic, obviously I'm not giving any more of those workshops. So many of you have requested that I put them online. And I have finally done so, at least the first one. Joyful Union is now an online course that you can watch at your leisure. It's 90 minutes long, and I'm very excited to share it with you because I know, because I've been told over and over again, that the concepts and the principles taught in this workshop can have a huge impact on your marriage and can revive your marriage 
back to the place it was when you were first married. Remember that passion and that feeling of being in love. Has that faded away for you? Are you in constant conflict with your significant other? Are you in a place where maybe you're at your wit's end? Or maybe you're just starting out. And the other thing that's wonderful about the concepts that I teach in this course is that it also just talks about relationships in general. And I believe that these are universal truths about marriage and relationships. And I just want to give you my personal guarantee that these things that I teach in this course can and will change your marriage. And I can tell you that because I know for a fact that it has done that in the lives of so many. So if you just click on the link in the description of this podcast, you'll see a link directly to it, and you'll also see a discount code if you so desire. But again, I just wanted to finally put this together. It took me quite a bit of time, but hopefully it can be a resource for you. I would love your feedback on what it has done for you and your relationships and your marriage, and I can't wait to hear from you. With that, thanks again and more JMAC Snacks on the way.